working on building uh, a contract for a transaction desk. Um, the property that I picked out here is um, 965 Sherway and Osprey. So we're going to go ahead and get started. The first thing that I'm going to do is actually start a folder for this listing um, because there are some documents that I'm going to need to uh, upload into Transaction Desk a little bit later. So I'm going to show you how to do those. Um, and so to start this folder, I would click here on <clears throat> these icons because these are some of the things, these are the supplements that I'm going to need to upload into the contract. So being that said, Um, you know, so the, the things that I, I want to get upload here are my addendum and my seller's property disclosure. Um, the other items are more for information. And so let me um, open this. Let me go ahead and save this. Hit save as. And because I am doing this, let me go ahead and uh, create a new folder. One, and I just want to make sure that I get the actual address correct. Let me make things smaller right here. All right, let me just put it in 01. And, uh, and then we have the seller's property disclosure. I'm going to also put that in 01. Okay, so those are the two documents that I'm going to need to write my contract. And so I have already downloaded those into a file onto my hard drive. So now I'm back to the MLS. <coughs> and, um, and so I'm going to work on um, moving over into uh, the contract area. So from the MLS, uh, I can go directly to Transaction Desk to write up the contract. And so by hovering over the TD uh, in the MLS listing details, I can actually go directly to um, the contract. And <clears throat> when you go directly to the uh, to a transaction desk through the MLS like this, it auto populates all the information and brings that over and uh, into the transaction. So, real quick, as an overview in transaction desk, the links on the left hand side will jump to different components of the transaction, and each of those components is comprised by the gray heading uh, here at the top. So I can also jump directly to those components by going to the edit button at the end of the gray box for each section. The first thing I want to do is come down to the bottom section and I want to make sure that all the people, you know, all the parties um, involved are correct. So right now we have a listing broker, we have a listing agent, we have a selling broker, and we have a selling agent. Now you can see um, that the the Seller's name is on file. Well, that's not really good enough to write the contract, so we're going to need to edit that and put a seller in here, and we're also going to need to edit that and put a buyer in here. So because I'm not quite sure what the seller's uh, information is, I'm going to come here to the tax ID number and pull up the tax, um, the tax ID uh, based uh, on that number, which is going to then identify who the owners of the property are. And here, here you can see um, we have Mike, Michael Murphy and we have uh, Camilla Walker um, as the owners of the property. So it looks like there's a typo or they uh, put his middle initial uh, right next to his first name. I don't know why uh, that's, a, that's incorrect. So double check to make sure that that's uh, incorrect. Another thing I can do is I can come here and I can check out the IMAP. And um, I can look at the IMAP record and see if the IMAP record has it a little different. And you can see here the name is done properly. 
um, Michael Murphy, and then Carmela Walker. So since these are the seller's names, I'm going to break this out off to the side here. And um, I'm now going to go back to here. Uh, because I, I, it kicked me out of transaction desk, I go back into the transaction uh, desk again. But I can just go back right back into the, the property by clicking on this button here. Um, it may have. All right. It, uh, it seems to want to use this pillar here to, to, to get to the transaction now. All right. So um, we want to hit edit. And here it says I would like to. I'm going to add a new per party to the transaction. I'm going to be adding a seller to that transaction. And then I'll hit the continue. And the first person um, that I'm going to be adding as a seller, again, that was Mike Murphy. All right. And I need to look up uh, Carmela's name to make sure I got that spelled correctly. So let me come back over here to the MLS. Um, I have to click on the IMAP that had it correctly. All right. And then I can get back to my transaction. Okay. Back down here, I'm changing, I'm adding someone to the thing. There's a seller. And I go ahead and add the, the seller's name. I don't know why I keep thinking I got it spelled wrong. You guys are probably thinking, hey, it's crazy. Normally I would print this out and I'd have it printed out in front of me instead of trying to do it all online here. And it seems not wanting to work. That's A M I L E. C A M I L E. There we go. So we got our name correct. Um, we're going to go ahead and save that. I'm going to go ahead and delete on file because I don't need that in there. So I'm going to delete that particular person. Yes. And now I'm going to add my buyer's information. And for this example, we're just going to use um, a simple name like John Doe. All right, and for his email, so I can show you guys how Fendersign works on their part, I'm going to use my email address. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And so now you can look here, and you can see we have the listing agent, the uh, listing company, the listing broker, the selling agent, the selling broker, the seller actually sellers, and then the buyer. So I have all the parties that I need um, to be a part of my transaction at this time. Now what I need to do is come back to my transaction overview. And I told you that I have some documents that I'm going to need to have them signed. So why don't I go ahead and pull them into the system. Um, I downloaded them, but let me pull them into the transaction desk. I can email them into the system, but I'm going to go ahead and upload them into the system. And um, and again, I just want to show you that step. I just came to document and I came to edit the button on the document section. Um, I, I clicking on that and it brings me to this screen where I can click on the menu to upload a document or I can click on the shortcut down here. Both are the same thing. So this time I'm going to jump right here on the shortcut. My document. Property. All right. And then I'm 
gonna name I'm gonna put what kind of category it is in. It's in this do a seller's real property disclosure statement. You know, I'm gonna, and I just want you to see right here, you can only upload one document at a time. So, because this, the system knew that I did since my last download, it jumped right to the file, and I'm going to go ahead and just go right in there. And once I have it loaded here, I can hit add to, add to transaction. And now it starts to add that document to that particular transaction. All right, so now we see that one here. And, um, and then I'm going to go ahead and add another document. And this time I'm going to use the orange button here to get there. All right, and again, this is, another, this is an addendum. And so I'm going to come down here and see if there's a, a section for an addendum. All right, well, it happens to be a Chinese drywall thing. So I'm going to go ahead and just name Chinese drywall, because that's what it is. Now I can click over, over my add to the addendum. I go ahead and hit add. And now I uh, go ahead and uh, hit the upload button here at the bottom. All right, so now I have my two documents that I needed right here um, uploaded. And there's, you know, believe it or not, there's a couple other things that you can do with the software. If I wanted to combine these documents into one document, I could actually highlight them here, and I could merge. Okay, I can merge selected documents, and then I can put them into one single document if I wanted to. But this allows me to do a lot of different things here um, in this particular area. I'm going to click on the transaction overview and back to the transaction overview. And here we are at the transaction overview from Colors Property Disclosure of the Addendum. So now what I need to do is actually add in my contract. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and click on Add Forms. And now this is my filing cabinet. In Transaction Desk, we have two filing cabinets that have all the forms that we need to write, to write up offers. So I'm going to scroll, scroll down, and, and the last two right here, this particular one and this particular one, are the contracts. These are the FAR residential contracts in attendance. This is a FAR bar residential contract and addendum. In our company, we prefer the FAR bar. So I'm going to open up that file. And you can see right here is the first contract, which is an as-is contract with the right to inspect. But for today's purposes, we're going to not do an as-is. We're just going to do a regular residential sales contract. So I'm going to go ahead and select that contract. And I can upload that. Now, if there are additional forms that I need to add, um, I can do so. So um, I can, again, just come right here and add more forms, and it'll take me back to my filing cabinet. All right. Now, this time, what I'm going to do is I know that I need, a, I need a couple things. I need an HOA disclosure. So let me come in here and see if there is a um, a homeowner's association disclosure. And there it is. Um, I'm not sure if this is in a flood area um, and things of that nature, but let me just, if you hold down your control key, okay, and by the way, it tells you that right here. All right, if you hold down your control key, you can add additional things to the transaction. For, let's just assume that this is in a flood area and I want to add a second one. That's how I would do it. I just click on it and add um, a second addendum. Very easy. Fine. So then I'm going to hit add to the transaction. And now you can see I have three documents in the transaction. I can even sort the order in which I want the documents. Maybe I want the flood insurance next. And so I can click on 
you know, move that up, and then I can rotate my order in the way I have my document. So you can, you can, you can move these things around and put them in the order that you want. One of the things I highly recommend is when you upload documents to this section, just take a moment and click Auto Populate and Update Forms. And once it's done, it will turn up here in red that uh, the forms are updated successfully. All right, so now it's time to get into writing up our contract. So I can click right here to write up my contract and go directly into editing. All right. Another thing I can do is from the transaction overview, I have all the documents over here to the right. And again, these are the documents that I, will have that I uploaded from the MLS. So let me go ahead and click right here on this one to open up the editor, the contract editor form. And as you'll notice, all the names are already placed in here for me. And because I took the time to do the work up front to put the names of the seller and the names of the buyer, all my forms are able to auto-populate, which makes things extremely easy for me. And then down here, um, the legal description got brought through. I don't need to add any of that stuff. So right now, um, I'm going to go through and fill out the contract. Everywhere there is a star to the left-hand side, that is a field within the contract that I must fill something in or that is potentially, you know, I need to fill in. Um, this has pretty much a lot of the appliances that are in the home already. You can see range, refrigerator. But one of the things it doesn't include is the washer and dryer. So I'm going to go ahead and add the washer and dryer. It also doesn't include the pool equipment, and this property has a pool. So I'm going to add pool equipment. All right. Um, if there was the items that I was uh, excluding, this is where I would exclude the items. Um, I didn't take a peek at what price uh, the property was. So let me look here. We're at $449,900. So let's just go ahead and make them an offer of four hundred and forty thousand. All right. I'm gonna come back to my transaction. We're gonna offer them four hundred and forty thousand. I typically put a decimal because hopefully we look at where my uh, where my numbers need to be. Here. All right. So this top line is where my um, amount goes. My next line is my initial deposit. Uh, for all of this price, I probably want to put about $5,000 down to start with, okay? And we always want to make it a few days after the acceptance. And if I left this blank, it would automatically be three days if I check that box. Um, I don't know who the escrow agent is, so I'm going to set to be determined, okay? So we're going to do that at a later time. There is going to be some... Um, the finance response. And so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to put the finance oh, percentage. Uh, she's the administrative assistant, is it correct? Okay, is she helping um, Dennis with a, one of my... There we go. All righty. All right, so once I put in the 80% in this particular contract, it actually came up with the amount. So it actually knew how to calculate uh, these different percentages. It's okay if it writes the word balance down here. In this particular instance, it uh, it put in the amount of money that was necessary um, to come to closing. Actually, this should be uh, balance down here. I don't know why it's not calculating properly. All right, it wiped out all of that stuff. Very interesting. All right, so let's try this again. <laughs> all right, and we're going to offer 440000 we're going to put $5,000 down. 
then we're going to to be determined. And then we're going to have our financing of the person. All right, I'm going to go ahead and figure out what 80% of that amount would be. So let's take a look at that. All right, so for my finance amount, I'm going to put in here 352. There we go. Um, so I actually had to calculate that for this particular contract. All right. Um, now what we're going to do is give them about two days for acceptance. So we can see that we're here on Wednesday. We're writing the offer. We'll give them until Friday. Um, since we are having a finance deal, I want to go out at least like 40 to 45 days. So I can uh, look at August. And then I'm going to look here the 12th. That's a Saturday. And then I wanted to go out a little further. So I'm going to look for a Thursday the 24th as a closing. I'm going to follow through the contract. Um, there's a couple uh, spots right here. If I leave this blank, it's automatically going to be 14 days. So I'm good with that. The property is not subject to a lease. The contract cannot be assigned, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure that we're doing that. Um, the buyer will be attaining financing. They will be getting a conventional mortgage. I don't know if they're going to get a fix or adjustable, so I'll give them the benefit of both. And the loan amount, and this just talks about the interest of the loan. I'm just going to leave it alone. It's going to be prevailing, and within 30 days. So. We're looking to get, you know, a third, 30 years in the term. I'll go ahead and type that in. Um, the person should make application no later than, you know, I'm going to put two days and says five days. But my my buyers already started talking with the lender and getting pre-qualified. And as I scroll through here, um, I get to my repair limits. Um, if I leave this blank. One and a half percent. So I'm going to go ahead and leave, put one and a half percent in here for each of these. That's the four and a half. There you go. All right, so now we need to determine who's going to pay for title. In this particular instance, we're going to go ahead and ask the seller to pay for title and the, the seller to pick the title company. It's totally optional of who gets to pick it here. Um, home warranty, there's no home warranty in the transaction. Um, now, this talks about special assessments. Well, they told me that there weren't any special assessments, so I'm going to make sure. If there are any special assessments out there, we want them paid in full at the time of closing. And as I scroll through my contract, most of the rest of the contract is just language. There's not any blanks to the contract. So we're just going to kind of scroll down through um, the contract. Um, during our contract class, we will go over all the details of the contract. So for today, we're just working on the software that helps you fill out the contract. All right, we know that we have a homeowners association writer who's in a homeowners association. We know that um, we put an insurance writer on here. So we want to make sure that um, we check for the homeowners flood insurance. 
And they did put a defective drywall uh, addendum in here. Okay? So those are our those are our three addendums that we have, and um, you can see we're on page 11 now. And so now I'm down to my signature pages. So I'm pretty much done. Now, in the past, we used to collect the buyer's information and put it right here, uh, their their address and stuff. I don't. This is more for the purpose of uh, the title company. And so I wait and, and provide the title company um, the buyer's information uh, right away uh, after they receive the contract. So this is all completed. So I'm going to come over here to file, and I'm going to first save it. All right, so I hit on the Save button. Once I have it saved, I can come here to file. I can come down to exit and get out of the screen. Now, I, I've completed one document, so now I need to do the homeowner's disclosure. But before I do the homeowner's disclosure, I need to check out that the listing agent didn't provide me with a homeowner's disclosure. Um, I do want to double check real quick because I do have a seller's disclosure, and I want to make sure that it wasn't um, added to that. So let me take a quick peek at the seller's disclosure. And as I upload, I can see that's the seller's disclosure of page one. Page two. Nope, this is just the seller's disclosure. All right, so I need to go ahead and add. Um, I need to fill out my HOA disclosure. So if I come back over here to the listing, I can look down here in the homeowners association section, and I can see that it does have these restrictions. It does have a fee, and it says it's semi-annual. All right. So being that, uh, you know, since I know that, that this is the information that I need, I just need to know the name of the homeowners association. So I can see that it's Rivendale here. So let me just take a quick peek at the tax record and see what the homeowners association is actually called, see if we can locate that. Okay, I can't seem to find the name, so I will just go ahead and call it Rivendale's Homeowner Association. Um, and then I can always be corrected later, but it, it definitely needs to be, um, we do need to add this uh, addendum. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and highlight this. And then I'm going to come back to the transaction. It says it's going to let me. So let's force it to do that. I come into the MLS and click on the transaction desk. And then that should do it for me. There we go. All right, so here's my homeowner association up form. Again, it ought to populate all the contact information here. Um, it even put Rivendale um, description, okay, the name of the community. And what I need to do is put in here, you'll be obligated to pay assessments of the association. And we had $301. And that's per semi-annual, is what I thought I saw. Okay. 
And then it says right here, such special assessments. Well, there's no special assessments that we're aware of. And the next section just talks about rent of a common facility. Well, there's not any rent of a common facility. So this is all I need for the um, Homeowners Association disclosure. All right, so that's filled out. I come over here and I hit my Save button. And then I come over and I exit out. And I come down here to my flood insurance, because now um, that's our last addendum that we have here. And I'm not sure. Um, you know, what the Homeowners Association, uh, is, what it's going to cost for insurance, okay? So um, I might just leave this blank. And I, I might go ahead and, and put out, you know, during the home inspection period that we're going to, you know, find out, um, it says five days prior to closing, 30 days. And again, I don't want the buyer to have a right to cancel the contract. Um, you know, at the, at, the, at the 11th hour. So I am going to, you know, give them a few days to try to find out what the insurance is going to be, okay? If it's in a flood zone, then I would uh, check this box here for the flood zone. But for right now, we're just going to work on the homeowners association. I'm sorry, the homeowners insurance to make sure it's not going to be too expensive for this home. You know, and maybe I'll put a number here of like uh, $5,000. All right. Now, what I would do is, before, as I was filling this contract out, I may I may call up an actual insurance company and have them give me a price quote. All right. And so now that this is filled out, I mean it's only one page. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And once that's saved, I can come down here and hit file exit. Now I've filled out all my documents over here on the right hand side. These are documents that just need to be um, initialed by my client, but I wanted to preview here this addendum. Okay. Um, this addendum happened to be about the drywall. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna roll it up so I can see what's going on here and, and look at this addendum. All right, this just talks about, um, she actually labeled it the wrong thing. This is the Homeowners Association Disclosure, and you can see right here. So we can actually use their Homeowners Disclosure, because they actually have it filled out properly. They just labeled it wrong um, in the contract, saying that it was um, a drywall disclosure, okay, which kind of, which confused me. So being that said, now I need to come back here to my transaction overview and realize this addendum is the HOA addendum. So I don't need this one. I don't need two of them. So let me go ahead and hit edit. I'll come in here to my homeowners association. I don't need this. So I'm going to delete this form from the transaction. All right? And so now I can go ahead back to my overview. And now I have everything that I need. I got an addendum, which is a homeowner association addendum. I got the contract. I got the flood addendum. I'm ready to go. So now I'm ready to send this off to my client to get it signed, because it's all complete and filled out. So from here, I can click on the Authentisign button. Now, a lot of agents make the mistake and click on this button up here. That just takes you into the program. If I click on Authentisign right here, it takes this transaction over to the program. So let's click on this button here. And you can see it gives it a street name. Now I just want you to remember, what we're setting up is a, um, a transaction to be signed. Okay? And so this is the name of this transaction to be signed. And we're going to do inline signing, which means everybody um, will go in order in how they sign. First one person, then the next person. I could have them all sign, you know, first come, first serve. But um, I'm just going to do inline. I like to have one person sign and then the next person sign. 
I can also use the same email for one person and then the next person. So they can just use one account assigned to both parties. I don't need to mess with the advanced option. Okay, when you want to come in and play with the program, worry about that. But for today's purposes, you can see right here, we've already got a name. Uh, for that, this has given us the green light checkbox, so we're ready to go. Now I'm going to come down here and add my participant. So when I click on this button, I have lots of options. I can add a new participant. I can pull over participants from my transaction. I can even add somebody from my contact. For our purposes, we're going to pull it from our transaction. And you remember, we have John Doe in here. And now he's a remote signer. If they were in person, okay, I could actually have it emailed to me as an agent and have them sign it right in front of me on my email. All right, so this is how you have them do electronic signatures in person um, to the contract. If I wanted to have someone just review the contract, I could add them to the sequence of, of who saw the, the document as a reviewer. For this purposes only, I'm going to go ahead and just, they're a remote signer. I don't need to CC anyone. And I don't need to put anybody else in here because I'm not sending this off to the, the, um, the sellers. I'm only sending this off to my buyers. All right, so once I click who I've added, you can see here, it gives me their signature. Now, um, if I wanted to add someone else, I just click on the Add button. So you can see here, step two is pick, uh, checked off. If I wanted to, I could come in here and I could, um, I could assign different information about this particular person. I could change their role if I wanted to. But for this, for this purposes of our class, we're just going to leave it the way it is. All right. Now I, the next section is to upload my document. Again, I can take them from my transaction. All right, I can take them from forms. I can upload them from any of these other locations. I can upload it brand new from here. So if I forgot to put it into the transaction, I could upload it in here to get it signed anyway. But because we have uploaded all our documents in the transaction, I'm just going to go ahead and click on the transaction here. So the documents I want into the transaction are the contract. I want the um, flood insurance. I want the addendum. I want the seller's property to disclosure. So these are all the forms. Now I could just click on this box and collect them all. And then I'm going to go ahead and click Add. All right. And again, it's trying to map what roles people are. This is buyer number one, and it's John Doe. So it's saying, uh, do you want buyer number one to be this particular signer, John Doe? And the answer is yes. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save. I just want to show you something. The flood insurance is here. The property disclosure is here. This is addendum. I really want the addendum over here with this part of the contract, but I'm going to move it this way. So now I've moved the addendum over here. I've got the flood insurance addendum and then I have the HOA disclosure, and then I have my property disclosure. So this is the order in which I want them stacked, so you can move them around at this juncture if you'd like. You can even open up a document right here, and you can eliminate or remove pages from the transaction. All right, so if there are pages that you just didn't like, you can highlight the page, and, uh, and, and actually, you figure out what page number that, that is on, and then you would delete, the, you know, write in the, the pages that you wanted to delete. So that's a way that you can change that up. So I have them ready to go. Now I click on the design. And so now what it's doing is it's creating one giant document that's 20 pages long. And as we scroll down, you'll notice right here, okay, Right here, um, you have the initial already there. Well, the reason why the initial is already there is because all the preforms know exactly where to put the initials. All right, so all my documents that were in the Instanet form, um, 
were part of Transaction Desk already, it knows exactly where to put the uh, the initials. Now let and as we get through, once I get down to page, all the way down to page 12, that's when my signature pages show up. Oh, we have the effective drywall thing still added. Well, and you can see that it went ahead and put their name and date stamp. Now, if they weren't here, I would just click over here on this drag and drop. This is my sign here. This is my initials. You can see the ones that are red. The ones that are red means that it's mandatory. If, it's, if you use the green, those are optional. Okay, blue means it must, optional, okay. So um, if I was missing the signature and I wanted to add it, I could do something like that. If I put something onto the document that I don't want, I got a trash can right there, I can just go ahead and eliminate it. All right, so the contract is done, the flood insurance is done, and now I got the effective drywall addendum. So they did have an effective drywall addendum that they put in there. Um, all right, so we're going to go ahead. And so this is the first form that they have in the, in the system. And you can see right here is where my buyer's name needs to go, and my buyer needs to date that. So I'm going to click on sign here, drag that over drop it, it's going to fall where it wants to, and then I'm going to replace it. I'm going to right click, okay, and I'm going to pull up the add time stamp, and then I'm going to drag that over here to the date section. And there you go. That's how you add the signature for that section. So I'm just checking up here, making sure there's no initials. There's no initials on here, so that's all I need for that. Oh, here we go. Now we're into additional information. So here's an initial. So I can now just drag the initial box over and drop the initial box. And as soon as I let go of it, it tends to put in a different spot. So I'm going to raise that up and make sure that that's right. And then I come down here to the next page and there's a buyer signature here. So I'll go ahead and drag over my buyer's. Whoops, I got the initial one. You just drop it there, trash can it, and then the sign here, one, upload, I right click, add my timestamp, there we go, and I can see I got an initial down here at the bottom that I'm going to need to put in. All right. And then I have my seller's disclosure on top of that. So here comes the seller's disclosure. Um, I can see my initials are down here at the bottom. So I'll come over here and put that down there for you. And then this is a signature page. So again, having the getting the buyer's name down, adding the timestamp. Yeah. And then I'm go ahead and oops. Don't need that one. Go ahead and bring my initials over here for this. All right, and then I have this one last signature as well. So I go ahead and bring this over. Add the timestamp and move that over. One last initial. All right, so I got everything here that I needed. 
I do one quick one quick review um, through the document. Make sure I got everything. Um, it looks like I did. So I got all the signatures and all the documents in the right places. Everything looks amazing. All right, so now that I'm done, I just click on the next button. And you'll see here that it's finishing up the document. Ah, great. So it looks like I need to update my subscription. <laughs> so at this point, it would then send the, the transaction out to the owner for signatures. All right? And that's really all there is to uh, sending out the authenticide is you know drag and drop and then get those signed uh, get those signed documents that direction. So I'm sure that you'll enjoy this uh, software program. It's wonderful. Play around with it, you know, and, and have a great time. Thanks so much for coming to the class today, and I'll open up for uh, questions and answers now. Thank you, Kano. Thank you. Yeah. I don't have any questions.